This is Michael Williamson at the MCG in Melbourne before a capacity crowd bidding you welcome to the 1972 Grand Final, Richmond versus Carlton. Carlton won the toss and they're kicking down to the Richmond end and of course Richmond will be kicking up to the new scoreboard end. The umpire is Bill Della, both teams as selected. It's a fantastic side here, an electrifying atmosphere. The ball is on Richmond's half forward flank on the outer side of the ground. Bobby Skilton, you've noticed changes. Well, quite a few changes, Mike. Uh, Mackay's gone to a back pocket, wait to a half back flank, picking up Richardson. Nichols has opened in the forward pocket. Jones opened in the first ruck. Armstrong has gone to the centre, Chandler to a half forward flank. Carlton have uh, literally changed almost half the selected side. Can you see any changes for Richmond? Not so far, Mike. I'm still trying to pick them up, but I can't see any at the moment. Southby now, almost in the back pocket on the outer side of the ground. The ball swings in towards the centre of the MCG. They fly high, the ball's knocked away. Through comes Kevin Hall. McCullough knocks the ball forward, taken there by Jackson. Jackson down towards the goal square. Nichols comes out there, the ball is knocked away, however. Taken now by Walsh. He gets it out to the wing position on that outer side of the ground. Players go over. It's a pretty hectic opening of the 72 grand final. There's Morris of Richmond coming through. Gallagher of Carlton has the ball. Tries a hand pass. And there'll be a free kick going Gallagher's way. As Nichols at full forward, as Gallagher takes his kick. It's one deep down into the scoring zone. Taken by Robert Walls. He runs in the shed, but he gets his left boot to it. And the first score of the 72 grand final, one point to Carlton. Ron Barassi. Well, Mike, obviously the Carlton selectors and the coaches have planned this uh, side, especially around, uh, changed it around completely almost to... Keo and Sheedy having a go at each other behind the play. Sorry, Ron. That's a big kick out from the Richmond fullback. It comes down a ground, but there's a free kick. Look at this. And there it is on again. Well, it just shows that the... Uh... And the bound round pies warned Keo. Well, I think he's probably won both players, Mike. It just shows you the intensity of which this game is going to be played. There's a punch down, goes to the ground. Armstrong's in there. He's been a good player in the finals. Coming through there was Bartlett. He gets his left foot down to the halfback flank where Duel's in the race for the ball. Takes it now. Steadies has plenty of time to place the ball up towards the wing. Almost picks out his teammate, but Robertson has got the ball now. Has forced the handball and it goes over the line on the true wing position out of sight of the ground. Wait for the throw in now. The umpire Bill Della. In goes Jones. McKellar gets up in front. McKellar gets a tap away. In comes Morris. Morris is bundled over. It's called a bounce, I think. Umpire Bildell are about to bounce the ball on the half forward flank for Carlton on the outer side of the ground. 34, there's Robertson. 28 is Jones. Up he goes, but McKellar comes in, gets a tap away. Taken by Kevin Hall. Kevin Hall down towards centre half forward. Jessalenko leading out. Jessalenko loses control of the ball. Over anxiousness, but he's still going. Jessalenko now tries a short one. It'll come off. Keo marks. Keo has marked within kicking distance. 30 yards out on an angle. Kicking to the Richmond end goal. Kevin Sheedy on the mark. Keo coming up. He's in good line. It's on its way. It's swinging around. It's swung in. The first goal of the match to Carlton from the boot of Trevor Keo. Three and a half minutes into the opening quarter. Bobby Skilton. And what an opening, Mike. Uh, you mentioned about Keo. It's not just Keo, but it's every player on the ground. Carlton have literally changed half of their side. There is, they've made eight positional changes to the selected side that I can come up with. And so far, the Carlton boys have adapted themselves better than the Richmond side. They've been in attack for, for most of the uh, three and a half minutes of play so far. As we get a, another centre bounce, it's a high one. Jones is up high, beats the chat for the knock. Chandler comes through, puts a short kick along the ground. It's Walsh coming out, but it's Keo who beats him to the ball. Keo swings around, drives the ball high, looking for Robert Walls. From behind, Nichols knocks the ball away. It comes down to Kevin Bartlett. He does a blind turn, gets out of trouble with the left foot and finds his teammate in Morris. He plays on quickly, going straight through the centre of the ground. A driving kick towards centre-half forward. It's Duell and Hart. A great mark by Hart, but it's called play on by umpire Bill Della. Oh. A free kick against Royce Hartwell, holding the ball, it goes to Southby, he plays on quickly. His kick smothered by McMillan, the ball going towards the centre wing position. It's Morris of Richmond who comes through, he's well pushed in the back according to umpire Della. And out on the half forward flank, it'll be Morris of Richmond Ruck Rover to take the free kick. Dallas uh, bringing a 15 yard penalty against the Carlton side. Kevin Morris. The kick by Morris, not a particularly long kick, it goes in with Mackay of Carlton, comes out in defence and it's Mackay 
who takes a good, strong defensive mark. Mackay selected as a ruck rover, started off in the back pocket. This kick by Mackay, off the side of the boot a little bit, punched away by Hurst. It comes to Armstrong, he quickly gets the ball to the foot. Going now looking for Walls, it's punched away by Walls from Hunt, finds Robertson. Robertson puts a left foot to the ball, it finds Keo well out in front. Keo walks around a couple of opponents, runs on quickly. A poor kick by Keo, goes past Chandler, it's taken by Dick Clay. Clay bursts away from defence, drives the ball right out of danger, but Clay has been held up by umpire oh. Dyer and has given a free kick to Trevor Keo, obviously against Paul Sproul. Personally, I did not see it. I was following the ball, and I can't give any uh, decision at all as to just why that might have been a free did kick. Did you see it, Ron? Yes, a whack across the head, but I thought he called playing because he already, you know, gone with the play. Keo now down four. They fly high. Jesselinko was in that lot. Couldn't come out with the ball. Hunt tries a kick off the ground. Big Nick's in after him. Nick picks the ball up, but he's given away a free kick. Hunt to take it. Hunter Richmond now, he's a left footer, takes his kick, goes towards the centre of the MCG. Up goes Jones, knocks the ball away, Barry Richardson, but it's Sproul. Sproul now of Richmond, right deep down into the forward zone. David Mackay backing back, drops the mark. Oh, and he gets it hard. Across it goes to O'Connell. O'Connell of Carlton out of the halfback flank on the outer side, and Francis Burke takes a mark. Burke of Richmond, a great player. His kick is a long one, back into the forward zone, Barmer's in front, Mackay knocks the ball away, in comes Southby, they're scragging, plenty of free kicks in that lot if you want to look for them. Oh, Barry Richardson off the ground, put it through. Richardson fumbled, recovered well, and kicked it off the ground as you saw, and it's the first goal of the match to Richmond at the six and a half minute mark into the first quarter. Carlton now. 1-1-7 to Richmond, one goal straight. Ron Barassi, you've played in eight grand finals. How much is the pressure on both teams out there? Can you feel it? Well, the players are almost beside themselves with anxiety and determination to do well. And this often causes mistakes. There's the big bounce. Goes up towards McKellar. He gets the knockdown. It's taken by Bond, but he couldn't get his connect connection. Sproul handballs out in the open. Going towards Armstrong. He eventually, no, about to break away, but a free kick has been called back to Morris, who will take his... About third or fourth kick already for the match. He may be a force in this game. Going towards the forward pocket. Beats both McKay and Barman. Goes out of bounds in the forward pocket on the inner side of the ground. So far, the match looks at a complete uh, replay of the second semi-final replay in the first quarter. It's a great game. McKay goes up. Gets it down to Keogh. Keogh balks around. He's balking. He's working well today. He gets up towards the half-back flank. Favoring Dixon. And Dixon takes a good mark there. Well judged against Bond. A uh, uh, bit of a... Whack in the face there for freeze of it, but part of the game, completely accidental. His torpedo goes up towards Robert Walls. Robert Walls forced to punch, but goes to the ground. Highwood's in there, kicks it off the ground. Taken by Bartlett. He goes high towards centre half forward. A big pack of players five. Hall punches, then recovers. Handballs across to Keo. Keo drops it. Recovers on the ground. It could be a decision here. I think it is. It's a ball up. Perhaps the wisest decision that uh, umpire Della could make under those circumstances, and this will take place in front of the member stand on the half forward flank for the Richmond side. McKellar, Jones, no one goes, uh, gets the knock. Coming through there was Morris once again, gets his kick up towards Richardson. Wait, knocks him aside, of course, to knock it on two towards Duell. Duell well shepherded by Hurst, gets his kick up towards centre half forward, punts away by Walsh. Armstrong coming in, couldn't gather the half volley. Could be a free kick there, no play on his call. This is real pressure stuff there. As Armstrong is ridden into the ground there, must take the free kick between the centre position and the wing position on the inner side of the ground. Armstrong now playing in the centre. That's one of the changes that uh, Carlton have rung, one amongst many. He goes for a long kick now. Good kick for Armstrong. It's gone at least 60 yards towards Jezelenko. Jezelenko almost took the one-hander. Here he is again, the Magic Man hand passes towards Walls. Walls gets it across the woods. Nichols, Nichols touches the woods. Now, uh, Jackson it was, and he just uh, could not get his foot to it over the last few inches, and a certain goal was missed there for the Carlton side. For us already, one thing is evident, there's not much between these two teams in ability. Well, uh, no, Mike, but uh, the same applied, you know, three weeks ago, so that's it's a, a bit, bit early to tell, but there's a knockdown by Jones. Went to, to Keogh, Keogh comes in, so does Dixon. He gets a short pass up the wood, big, little Sydney. I was going to say big Sydney. He's a big star, is Sydney. Uh, a free kick on that occasion. I couldn't quite figure that one out. But Boynich must have been being shepherded by Alex Jezelenko. Clay I'm talking about. Clay with a kick now up towards the halfback flank. A beautiful kick. Big pack of players fly. Royce Hart couldn't get it. Ke Kevin Hall, ruck raving, comes through. Breaks away. Is forced a handball to lose possession. 
Hart with the ball. Gets the right foot up towards Jones. Jones has the ball spoiled. Richardson, hand passes to Spell. Good work, Barry Richardson. Spell up with a drop kick up towards McKay. McKay punches the ball away. Free, but manhandled free. at the same time. It and is a free. Barn will take it. Correctly called. And uh, young Barn, Neil Barn, takes a kick now about 50 yards from goal. And Royce Hart, degrees. you saw him a moment ago on the back line. They're covering territory, these boys. Baum kicking up to the scoreboard end. Wade and Richardson having a bit of a niggle. Southby watching McLean. It's on its way from Baum and it's through. Richmond's second goal of the match at the 11 and a half minute mark into the first quarter. Well, Bobby, what impression have you gained so far? Well, exactly what you said before, Mike. There is not much between these sides. The pressure that's on at the moment is absolutely great. There's uh, Tommy Hafey in the other box, uh, Keith McKenzie, and there's much, just as much pressure on, the, on these fellas. Probably not as much on McKenzie because he's got nickels out in the ground. Mackay and Baum there at the moment, and the pressure that's on every player, you can see that there's been a bit of fumbling. Even Keo, who's uh, probably been uh, one of the best players on the ground so far, has fumbled on, on occasions, and it's purely because of pressure. This pressure will naturally ease up a little bit later, but uh, it'll take a long while the way this game's going. They've lost the ball. A new one has been brought out to umpire Bill Della. Della, the obvious choice for the 72 grand final. He's umpired magnificently throughout the year. There's uh, McCullough trying to get the ball, but through comes Francis Burke. Burke now up to the forward zone. Out comes McLean, and McLean is marked. McLean looking for a 15-yard penalty, but it's not on, says umpire Bill Dello. But McLean is only about 45 to 50 yards out, with well within kicking distance. Puts in a bit of a skip, it's on its way. I think he's hooked it, the goal umpire is running across. One point results. Richmond now, two goals, one to Carlton, one, two. Waiting for Jeff Southby to kick out from the scoreboard end. A capacity crowd here at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. It's a wonderful sight, a thrilling sight. Southby's kick, he comes along the member stand flank. Now the players sit themselves. Jones is in front. McKellar goes up with him, neither able to take the ball. It comes to Sproul. Sproul of Richmond hooks it around, pops one for his corner. Down forward it goes, it bounces awkwardly. In comes Dool, but Bartlett kicks it off the ground, goes across the face. Cummings after it there for Richmond, but the ball goes over the boundary line. There'll be a throw in in Richmond's forward pocket on that outer side. Baum and Mackay going for it, up they go. They both tap it at the same time. In comes Bartlett. O'Connell sweating on him there, but Bartlett picks up, hooks it around with his left foot. The ball bounces awkwardly. Southby knocks it clean over the boundary line. There'll be another throw in in that forward pocket for Richmond on the outer side. We are now 13 minutes into the opening quarter of the 72 grand final. Up they go. Baum gets a tap away this time. Through comes Hart, but pushes the ball on in front of him. Mackay a bit slow, picking it up. Comes out with the ball. He's scragged. He could get a free. He'll get it all right. Bob Skilton. David Mackay, about 20 yards out from the Richmond goal. Alex to go straight up the centre of the ground. It's a lovely kick by Mackay, right to the centre. McCullough was up high, made no attempt to try and mark the ball, but it comes to Gallagher. Gallagher goes straight down the centre, looking for Robert Walls, and Walls it is who takes the mark. Hand pass along quickly to Armstrong. Armstrong drives it down, looking for Nichols right in the square. He's up high, but can't take the mark. Grabs the ball, puts it to Boone, and it's running towards goal. Full points, is that one from Nichols. Three Richmond players attempted to get to the ball, but unfortunately for them, it dribbled through. And that's uh, Big John's first goal for the game. Carlton second, and Carlton go to a one-point lead. Bob, hardly a classic goal. <laughs> Not exactly what you'd call classical, Mike, but uh, it's on the board, and it's still six points, and I'm sure that uh, John Nichols is uh, truly happy with that particular one. Probably, uh, you know, makes the move of Nichols starting off in the forward pocket worthwhile as Jones and McKellar go. McKellar gets a knock. It's knocked on by Sproul. Taken by Gallagher, he can't burst through the pack. But a free kick has been paid to Gallagher. It was up by Adela, decided that he was held. We're not in possession of the ball. Gallagher favouring the drop punt. Goes over looking for Jezelinko now. And it's a great mark by Jezelinko in the middle of the pack virtually. I think he caught Kevin Sheedy unawares. Uh, Sheedy made no attempt to punch that ball away. And uh, purely, I think, because he didn't realise that Jezelinko had it. Just a lick out about 45 yards out. The kick, it looks right oh, through the no centre. Worries. A lovely kick by Jezelinko. Jezelinko's first, Carlton's third. 
And they go to a seven-point advantage now with that lovely goal by Alex Jezelinko. Standard of play improving, Ron Barassi. Yes, Mike, they're settling down the two teams. It's interesting to notice that the first four goals uh, scored by Richmond and Carlton were, were from moves made by Carlton in that Richardson, who was manned by weight on the halfback flank, got his goal. Then David McKay let his opponent get a goal and Nichols, uh, permanent in the forward pocket to begin with, got a goal. Keogh's Rover got one and here we see Royce Hart breaking away but uh, it doesn't matter what he does, it's been called back to play and a free kick has been given to the Carlton side. O'Connell to take it. I, I believe that, uh, and I'd like to say this beforehand, Mike, it's easy after the ball, but I be believe Carlton's tactics are very well planned. Let's see what happens as the game unfolds and you're watching it through the Channel 7 network. There's a the kick from O'Connell, goes in towards the centre. Jones from behind, almost took it. In comes Sid Jackson. He can't uh, break clear and he'll get a free kick for being held while not in possession. Jackson a little wide at the centre towards the wing on the outer side. Jackson now swings in towards centre half forward. Plenty of Richmond fellows there. Up goes Big John. Couldn't go away with it. That's over to Jessalenko from Hall. Jessalenko hooks it around the left footer. Goes towards the pocket on the member stand side. Up goes Sheedy. Couldn't come out with it. Kevin Hall. Oh, blimey. Missed it. Oh, an open go then for Kevin, but uh, he couldn't steer it through, and you could see the look of anguish on his face. Waiting for Dick Clay now to kick out. Carlton a 3-3-21. Richmond 2-1-13. Clay kicking out from the Richmond end of the MCG. Where's he going? Looks like he's going to favour the outer side. His kick dropping a little short. and they come. Francis Burke unable to hold the mark. A battle going on. Robertson with the ball. Can't get away. Cummings fighting. Over it goes to uh, Burke. That's called play on. Burke shepherded by Bartlett to McKellar. McKellar a long hand pass across here to Morris. Morris now from the wing position on the outer side to the half forward flank on the outer side. In comes Ricky McLean. He's close to the boundary line. Oh! Round the neck, I'd say. And McLean has the kick a long way out. He's on the half forward flank on the outer side. Couldn't see him kicking the distance. It's going almost to the edge of the goal square. Up they fly. No mark. The ball picked up there by McMillan, but he can't break clear. Taken by Hurst. Hurst comes along the member stand flank. Dixon has the run in there. Picked up by Armstrong. He's buffeted by Barry Richardson. The ball is hit over towards Bond. Bond now shoots at the big ones. It's drifting across. And one point results. That takes Richmond now on to 2-2-14 to Carlton. 3-3-21. And we've been playing 18 minutes into the first quarter. There's the... Probably the most talented runner in league football, Roger Dean, former captain of Richmond, broke his wrist a few weeks ago and has missed out on the final series. Bad luck for Roger, one of the game's great personalities. There's another one, Big Jones. Thought it was his, I don't think he's too happy, but a free kick had gone to Barry Richardson of Richmond. Richardson now. He would be some 65, 70 yards out. Kicks the ball, it's lobbing in the goal square. They set themselves, no mark. The ball knocked through for another behind to the Tigers. We're on the, the game, it's a, a very tight one. Very tight indeed. No doubt about that, Mike. Uh, it's going to be the, the same situation that applied three weeks ago. It's a matter of the first team to break, as we see Jeff Southby going this time to the inner side of the ground towards Jones. He goes to the mark, McCullough once again punches the ball down. This time it favours Barry Armstrong who picks out Sid Jackson. Here's a crunch here. But Sid just uh, taps the ball across. It comes to Robert Walls. He goes long for the square. Here's a knock on towards Nichols. Very surprising to see that Nick. He must have learned from uh, <laughs> last week or the week before when he uh, played on and ha had a man come from behind to smother the kick. So he didn't take any chances on that occasion. And took the mark and uh, he was looking for an opening though i was but he could have played on the very first instance but here he is two yards out kicks the goal his second goal for the match and that's a move that's working well and will certainly give uh, tom hafey plenty of plenty to ponder on because john nichols is a different sort of customer in goal to to most because he's got such tremendous strength and his experience of course is a, a great aid to that strength so that's two goals to john nichols uh, one to uh, Trevor Keogh in a forward pocket uh, against Shitty, so that their moves so far have gained them three. 
down the other end it's cost them two Ronnie you pointed it out before but there's been one hell of a lot of planning gone into Carlton tremendous yes yeah, so, and I think you should judge the planning before it actually works and if it, it, the thinking's good well then it's a good idea back in the centre Bill Della bounces the ball it's an awkward bounce up goes McKellar with Jones there no be able to break clear taken by Chandler of Carlton Chandler gets down to, towards the goal square players racing out the meter over goes Walls Sheedy takes the ball Sheedy now out to the halfback flank on the outer side of the ground the ball bounces it's Chandler coming in Chandler pushing the ball in front of him he's looking for somebody to kick it to and he finds Keo. Keo wide of centre half forward out towards the flank on the outer side Keo's kick going down uh, Goldwoods the ball bounces it's Robert Walls and Walls has popped it through and Carlton at the 20 and a half minute mark into the first quarter looking pretty good they're 5-3, 33 to Richmond, 2-3, 15. Well, Bobby Skilton, you're surprised. Well, I am surprised, Mike, at the, the fact that Carlton have such a big break as this one, but they were very, very confident before the game, Carlton. There was a, a real air of, we are going to do well in the rooms, and uh, they've started off exactly this way. And one of the players going for the ball now, it's Peter Jones. He's got the knock from the centre, and Jones has been... You know, responsible in holding McCullough back there as the ball comes out to Wayne Walsh. Walsh's double line turn, gets a handball across to Francis Burke. Burke runs around Keo, puts a left foot to the ball, a bounce of the ball, almost beats Barmer, comes back to him, coming. He gains possession, gets a hand pass through to McMillan, it's coming back again. But a free kick has been found by Bulldog, and Darrell Cumming has the chance of bringing up Richmond's third goal. Cumming would be 50 yards out from goal, directly in front. Cummings kick, the distance is oh, there, no worries. so too is the accuracy as the goal umpire indicates full points and that's Cummings first, Richmond's third and it's two, two goals separating the two sides. 22 minutes into the first quarter Bob. Well just as Carlton got that three goal break it's uh, typical of Richmond and uh, right throughout this final series that they've come back very very quickly and very very hard. A good goal by Cumming then and one that will lift uh, the, the Richmond side. Back in the centre with umpire Bill Della. It's again Jones and McKellar. McKellar gets a knock. It's dropped by Sproul. Comes through to Dixon. He thought about a hand pass. Brooks back. Tries to break through. Quickly gets his foot. Goes sideways as Robertson comes through. Gets a hand pass across to Armstrong. Armstrong breaks through the centre and drives it down to centre half forward. And a great mark by Robert Walls. Walls thought about playing on. Now he elects to do so. Goes driving down, looking for John Nichols and Boyanich. Nichols up high and the big fella's almost taken it. Jezelinko comes through, puts a foot to the ball. Put a Full throw. points again. A great goal by Alex Jezelinko. A freak. His second, Carlton sixth. And I mentioned Richmond coming back. Well, you couldn't ask for more than the way Carlton have come back to answer that goal of Richmond. Carlton 6-3, Richmond 3-3. And Carlton again have that three-goal advantage. Coming back from the centre, it's one of their moves of Armstrong to the centre. He's playing particularly well. 23 minutes into the opening quarter. Ron Barassi, are you surprised? Uh, not yeah, really. Be not, honest. No, not really because they're capable of this sort of football. But let's see how the game continues on. I had a good feeling before the match. His partner with the kick in the centre. Goes for the long kick right down to the goal square. We see McKay fly high. No one marks the ball. Southley, of course, with his pace, will break away here. Out to the halfback flank, he'll go towards Ian Robertson, leading well. He's got the mark well in front of uh, Francis Burke at this stage. It's a good battle between these two players. Robertson now on the halfback flank, goes for the short pass up towards Paul Hurst, who walks around his left foot, will go for another balk. Coming into the centre of the ground, goes for the left foot, up towards the centre half forward position. We see Walls tries to look the ball on, but it's taken by Richmond here in person off Stephen Highwood. He goes for the long kick down to the other centre half forward where we see Brucey Dill go for the one-hander. A beautiful hand pass there by Jeff Southby to Vin White out on the half-back flank. He goes long to the half-forward flank. Alex Jezelenko goes for the one-hander. Confusion there reigns supreme amongst the Richmond players but they do recover as Dick Clay kicks the ball towards the boundary line. Adrian Gallagher judged the ball well, kept it in play with a one-hand, kicks towards the forward pocket. Dick play again, but a free kick has been called, favouring Boynich on this occasion in the back pocket for the Richmond side. Boynich will come along the member stand flank, takes his kick, not a bad one, a drop kick, a beauty, almost to the wing position on the member stand side. Ball bounces for Bartlett, it's in his favour, Bartlett going for a run, a hand pass across here to Hart, Hart hasn't been in the game so far, but a magnificent kick by Hart down in towards the forward pocket on the member stand side, a chance for coming into an open goal, and he's put it through. That's his second 
Cheese fast, Bobby. Very, very good to play on that occasion, Mike. Uh, Neil Baum must get full credit for the way he knocked that ball back into play, giving uh, Cumming the opportunity of running in to kick the easiest of goals. But it was Cummings, uh, you know, quick thinking, and it was opportune to come in there at the right time. And I'm sure our friends through uh, TBW in 7 in Perth, ADS 7 in Adelaide, CDC Canberra, TBT in Hobart, TMT in Launceston, RVN in Wagga, and relay stations throughout Australia are enjoying this first quarter of the 1972 Grand Final. With the scoreboard now reading Carlton 6-3 to Richmond 4-3. It's anybody's game. We've got a long way to go yet. It's a long journey. And those 36 uh, gladiators out there on the arena of the MCG have certainly got a big day in front of them. And we're looking forward to every moment of it. It promised to be a great game. We haven't been let down so far. Up they go. Bounce in the centre. The umpires, Bill Della. Both teams are selected. In they come. McMillan there. Pushes the ball in front of him. Couldn't get away with it. Highwood couldn't get through. But it's Kevin Hall of Carlton. Hall now goes to the big ones. Nichols! Look at him trying to crib around. The point which is equally determined that he's not. Oh, come on, John. <laughs> Worth the try, I suppose. But he's kicked two. He's kicked two. He's on an awkward angle. And Bill Della saying, uh, you can't trick me, pal. John Nichols. Had to be a very straight kick. As you can see, you've got a beautiful shot of the angle there. He manoeuvres around. He kicks it. Look at that. That's his third. Well, let's hear a comment from former Carlton coach Ron Barassi. Well, I've seen John Nichols in this situation many times before when he's in that forward pocket and he sets himself for a big task. In there, in that position, he really does the job. He gets the goals that are needed and he's certainly showing the way in this respect today. He's opened up in the forward pocket and so far Peter Jones hasn't come off the ball. So that's a, a great effort from Peter Jones and also John Nichols is doing the job superbly and this could be a change from Roger Dean. He's running out to Boynich. He's going to tell him to change his tactics or it may be a change there. There's a knock-on from Richmond. Goes towards centre-half forward. Royce Hart couldn't handle the ball. Coming through free there was... Free kick, the Hart. Francis Burke, but a free kick has been called. It penalised Richmond then. But Royce Hart with the ball in the true centre-half forward position for the side. A kick top short. Meets Southby. Southby fumbles the ball, but recovers. But his pace gets out towards the banning line. Paul Hurst there. Fumbled the ball initially, got the hand pass out towards Gallagher, put him under tremendous pressure, Wayne Walsh is in there. But Neil Chandler playing a good ruck raving game, gets his quick kick under pressure. Craig McKellar hand passes across to Paul Sproul, who's having a great duel in the centre with Barry Armstrong. It goes to the pocket and a great mark has been taken there. I think he'll find it with Jeff Southey in front of the pack. It's a few little uh, how do you do's, it's not a tea party out there, but there's no need to make it like Stadium Hall fellas, so keep your cool. And there's the fellow with all the cool in the world, Jeff Southey. Beaten at last start by Ricky McLean, is playing well at the moment. He goes long to the outer flank, a great kick, 65 yard, McCullough's there. Oh, and so is Royce right. Hart, couldn't control the ball, a tackle there, maybe a free kick, no. Whoa. Armstrong, a free kick has been called. A bit long there with the whistle perhaps, but uh, Barry Armstrong has the kick. It would be uh, up in about the six or seven mark by now. 28 and a half minutes into the first quarter of the 72 grand final. Robert Walls knocks the ball clear. Taken there by Highwood over to Clay. Clay of Richmond now. Drive to the half forward flank on the member stand side. The ball bounces, swings in towards centre half forward for Richmond. Taken by Southby. Southby very coolly kicks back over the centre. The players set themselves. And Mark to Robertson will it be paid? Yes. Ian Robertson of Carlton. A little short of the centre into Carlton's territory. About to put them further downfield. His kick, it's a beautiful drop kick. The forwards go for it, the back men fly too. It's down to Keogh. Keogh swings around, a left foot snap. One behind. 29 minutes into the first quarter. Carlton, 7-4, 46. Richmond, 4-3, 27. The big money men would be biting their fingernails now at this first quarter performance from Carlton. But don't sell Richmond out yet, I'll give you the big tip. Knock away there by Jones, taken by Jackson, he caught one. And it was seen. And Sydney's, uh, Sydney's uh, letting him know that he's in business too. And the kick given downfield. I don't think Richmond are in a position to start any of that rubbish. It's Dixon to take it, number 27. And he would be about 45 yards out on an angle. 
There's the kick. Oh, it's not a bad one. This is going to be close. It couldn't be any closer. It's right through. That's his first. And look at that scoreboard in the first quarter of the 1972 Grand Final. Carlton, 8-4-52. Richmond, 4-3-27. Well, there it is. You can't deny it. It's on the board. And Tommy Hafey must be wondering, what will he do? He's got sitting on the bench his 19th man, a triple Brownlow medalist in Ian Stewart. I think at this stage he must be very tempted to make some sort of move. But he's got great players out there. Can they come good? Can Carlton keep going? Gee, what a question. Well, what questions? They'll remain unanswered until about five o'clock. Francis Burke takes his kick now. It's a long one deep into the forward zone. Barmer's pushed out there. No free kick given. In comes Ricky McLean. McLean swings it around with his right boot and puts it through for one behind. There's McLean. Not opening as well as he did in their previous meeting. Carlton 8-4, Richmond 4-4. Four goals down the Tigers. Roger Dean out there talking to Ricky McLean as Southby prepares to kick out from the scoreboard end. Southby now goes out to the member stand flank. McKellar behind Jones. McKellar knocks the ball away, but it's in Carlton's favour. Through comes Morris. Morris in a bit of trouble on the weak position now, but eventually kicks to the half-forward flank. Barry Richardson's in there, but oh, big Percy Jones cuts across and takes the mark of a champion. Jones about to drive the Tigers out. There's his kick to the wing position, up goes McCullough, couldn't hold the mark, not doing as well today at the moment, anyhow, a scramble and a free kick has been plucked out of this, it's going to Rex Hunt by the look of it, Hunt of Richmond now, kicks in towards centre half forward, players backing back, knocked away by Barry Richardson, in comes McMillan, he escapes danger, McMillan lines him up and puts it through, 32 minutes into the first quarter. It's a long first quarter. Boy, oh boy. There's the scoreboard now, looking a bit better for the Tigers. Carlton 8-4 to Richmond 5-4. 13 goals scored in the first quarter of the 72 Grand Final. What more could you ask for? And you're watching it through the Channel 7 network. Back in the centre, Bill Della bounces the ball. Players go there, it's knocked away by McCullough, but it comes right back into the centre. They battle for it, Jackson's in there, Keogh runs into Morris. Morris dives on top of the ball, Jackson's in there, Keogh, and Bill Della is about to bounce it again. So after all that, they really didn't get very far. In comes Jones, Francis Burke's there, Burke knocks it away. Knocked by Jackson, taken by McKellar. McKellar kicks wide to the flank position on the outer side of the ground. Robertson couldn't control it, taken by Bartlett. Bartlett gets around O'Connell, but his kick is smothered, but he batters up again. Bartlett down into the forward pocket on the outer side of the ground. And there'll be a kick taken by David Mackay. The ball went over the line on the full. There's the siren. What was a very long first quarter, 33 minutes. And a quarter time, the scoreboard reads Carlton 8-4-52, Richmond 5-4-34. At the MCG, it's umpire Bill Della about to bounce the ball starting the second quarter of the 1972 Grand Final. At the start of the second quarter, we find Carlton are 8-4 to Richmond 5-4. There's a free kick going Richmond's way. Richmond in the second quarter will be kicking down to the Richmond end of the MCG and naturally Carlton up to the scoreboard end. Can Carlton keep it up? Francis Burke takes his kick. Down towards centre half forward. Plenty of Carlton defenders there. Through they come. Hart tackles strongly. Southby couldn't get away, but it's Morris with the ball. Morris running into an open goal. There's a wide opening for the Tigers. Yes, indeed. 34 seconds into the second quarter, and Morris has popped one on the board for the Tigers, and they look a lot better. Carlton will never feel safe until this match is over, if they're going to win it, Ron Barassi. Well, no team in the final does uh, feel that way, Mike, until that bell goes. You just don't know, and particularly, as you say, with Richmond, because they have a very good record of fighting back. That was a great answer to Carlton's great first quarter. So let's see what's going to happen now as the bounce goes up. Jones is in there, still in the ruck. A great effort from Jones. He's not goes astray, straight to Burke. Out to the half forward flank where Vin Wade on the half back flank punches the ball away from Richardson. However, Spell gets it, fumbles at the moment. Royce Hart's in there over the ball, ducks away with it, but Paul Sproul has been paid the free kick. I couldn't quite see what, what it was for, however. It was certainly an E for an effort job as Paul Sproul comes in now with a drop kick up towards full forward. A big pack of players fight it. Southby, coolly and calmly, takes the two grab mark, as a lot of Jeff Southby's marks are. And he 
puts the Blues out of pressure, out of uh, trouble up towards the centre position. We see his kick go. Sid Jackson playing basketball. Eventually comes to Adrian Gallagher. His kick goes wide to the half forward flank. Got Walls is in there. Beats Hunt on that occasion. A beautiful kick there. Awkward one. Finds Neil Chandler. His man Walsh has been left on. His kick goes towards Whoa. goal. That's a goal. A great goal by Neil Chandler. Full marks there to Robert Walls, who uh, was about to kick the ball with a straight follow through, but saw Chandler at the last bit second and flipped it across the side of his foot to find uh, Chandler all on his own. He'd been left on his own by Wayne Walsh. Two minutes into the second quarter. Ronnie, it's unusual to see a grand final this high standard so early. Yes, I agree with that, Mike. Uh, it was similar to the first second semi-final, but there wasn't the scoring that there is in this game. There's the bounce now. Jones and McCullough once again. No one gets the kick. A big pack of players. Bartlett's in there. Bundle away from the ball. A free kick has been called. Two Bartlett on this occasion. He plays on. He shepherded off by Francis Berger. Goes up towards Roycey Hart. Roycey Hart misses the kick. A big pack of players there. Desperation shown. Coming hand passes across to Richardson, who is forced to hand pass virtually to nobody, to an open goal. He was hoping to find Ricky McLean, but Ricky McLean had come out to help him, and so the ball ran through for a point. Here's the score now. Carlton, 9-4, 13 shots to 11 by Richmond. Richmond have a 17-point deficit as Jeff Southey kicks out. A little bit high, but still 65 yards as McCullough almost gets the mark. There's the man of the moment. Barry Armstrong going once again on his left foot. Picks out Sid Jackson, who takes the mark coolly under pressure there. Goes wide to the flank, and he'll find Robert Walls here. Robert Walls has got the run in on Hunt. Runs around everybody there. Comes in now towards goal. Oh. Whoa, baby. Was that a goal? Right from the bounty line. A direct contrast to his last effort against Richmond when he played well but kicked very badly. It's his second goal. And Richmond have got some thinking to do now. They've got a centre-half forward. He's kicked two goals. And a forward pocket. He's kicked three. Ron, in the second quarter, within three minutes and 20 seconds, three goals have been scored. Bobby Skilton, a freak game. Well, that couldn't even describe it, Mike. This football at the moment is, is absolutely marvellous. It was great play then by Jackson. From the bounce again, it's Jones who once again beats McCullough for the knock. With Francis Burke, his kick smothered. It comes back to Burke once again. He breaks out of the centre with a long kick. Almost uh, finds Neil Barn. He's bustled out of the side. A long hand a punch by Southby. Goes through. Armstrong knocks it on towards Hall. There's players going everywhere at the moment. As Hurst of Carlton comes out. Breaks onto his left foot. Puts a short one in. Finds Dixon. Dixon about to hand pass. But plays on with a kick down the centre half forward. It's Chandler who knocks the ball on past Walsh. It's Walls coming in once again. He grabs the ball. Puts the ball onto the left foot. It's swinging back towards the goals. And once again, Walls oh. put it through. And that's Walls second in a matter of about 30 seconds, maybe a little bit longer, and his third so far in the game. Four and a half minutes into the second quarter, and four goals have been scored. One to Richmond and three to Carlton. Carlton 11-4. Richmond six goals, five. And there they are, the Brains Trust. Tommy Hafey, you can see from the look on their faces. Tommy Hafey, obviously not happy. Umpire Bill Dalla walking past Francis Burke, who's trying to urge the Richmond boys on. And they need a lift at the moment. As again, it's Jones and McCallum. A big knock from McCallum. Knocked on by Morris. Duel knocks the ball away from Hart. And it comes back to Morris. He bursts straight down the ground. Puts the ball down towards the goal square. It's McLean and Southby. But a great mark in defence. Taken by Southby. He plays on quickly. Running around the outer flank. He's bounced the ball twice. Puts the left foot down towards the centre wing position. Jones is up high. Comes through now. It's Waite who bursts through the pack. Breaks away for Carlton. Looking for Robert Walls. Walls is up high, and it's Walls almost takes him out. Plays oh. on, dives on the ball. There's a pack boy, but Cleo comes out with the ball. Cleo runs around and plays, drives it towards the big one, and it's another one to go. Cleo second. John Nichols in the screen now. You can see the elation on his face. He's yelling at Kevin Sheedy, but Sheedy's not wanting to look back as Carlton go to 12 goals for hey. Richmond, six goals, five, and what a quarter. Carlton have kicked. Four goals in three and a half minutes. How is that? It's not bad, Mike, seeing Richmond kick one as well in that same time. This is fantastic football. And the crowd, you can hear them roaring. They're really going at this, and even though it's not an even game at this stage, but it's so exciting to see the brand of football being displayed at the moment. It's incredible, and you're watching it through the Channel 7 network.
at the MCG. Della bounces the ball. Up goes Jones. Taken there and kicked forward by Gallagher. It's at centre half forward for the Blues. Hunt knocks the ball away. Jesselenko man handled, but he picks the ball up. A hurried kick. He couldn't do much else about it. Taken by Kevin Bartlett of Richmond. Bartlett now to the wing position. McMillan throws himself at the ball. Well played. Over to Royce Hart. Here's trouble for the Blues. Look at Hart go. A hand pass to Francis Burke. Burke a long kick down forward. Barm is there. It is. Beautiful. Beautiful nail, Barm. A great mark. And Barm has already kicked one. He would be 35 yards out directly in front. Kicking to the Richmond end. Richmond need this one. Barm kicks. It's swinging, but it's there, and Richmond reply at the seven-minute mark into the second quarter. What a game. Mike Richmond have moved Graham Bond to the back pocket. Kevin shooty has gone into the, towards the centre of the ground, exactly where Shooty is going to play. It'll be hard to see at the moment. The board reading, Carlton 12 goals for, Richmond 7 goals 5. There's Bond down in the back pocket now with uh, Trevor Keogh. Shooty is now back in the, in the centre of the ground. Bond coming from the centre wing position. Possibly Sproul will go to the wing. Sheedy to the centre. It's just hard to say at the moment just what Tommy, what move Tommy Hafey has made. But uh... Bobby, in the second quarter, six goals have been scored in seven minutes. Four to Carlton and two to Richmond. Champagne football, Mike. As Robert Walls is there, he gets bustled aside. It's taken by Sheedy. Sheedy can't get clear, but it's a free kick for Kevin Sheedy. Sheedy at centre half back at the moment. A shocking kick by Sheedy. Goes into the centre of the ground. Hurst of Carlton Tom comes away with the ball. He breaks clear of McMillan. Drives Carlton out of trouble as he goes wide to the half forward flank. Looking for Jezelenko. Jackson knocks the ball back. It's Highwood and Jackson in the race for the ball. Jackson falls at the crucial stage of the ball. Knocked over the line and will find a throw in on the Carlton half forward line. Out, out of sight of the ground. Four goals, five, separating the two sides at the moment, as it's John Nichols there in the, in the ruck. He gets a knock down a shooting, but it's sharp by Kevin Bartlett. He gets a kick wide to the half-back flank. It's close to the line as Dixon comes through. Can't go in possession of the ball, and it beats everybody over the line, and we'll find another throw in. Ruckman getting ready. John Nichols going for the ball with McKellar. It's Nichols in front. McKellar gets a knock. It's knocked on by Jackson. Armstrong of Carlton comes through. Takes possession of the ball. Hooks the ball back. There's a pack of players forming. Waiting for it to come down as McKellar was up high. Knocks it close to the boundary line. Keogh's there, but the ball beats everybody over the line once again. Again contesting the knock. It's the same players. McKellar and Nichols. Nichols gets a knock, but it's taken by Kevin Martin. He can't get the ball clear. Highwood of Richmond has it. Here again, can't get it out. Gallagher comes in. Put the ball back down towards the goal square. And Jessalenko! What a wonderful mark on that occasion. Completely out of position. Threw himself at the ball and took that one. Jezelenko has kicked three. Two goals to Jezelenko. Going for his third. Jezelenko only 25 yards out. The kick. Close to the box goals, but it's again four points as Carlton really have a run on. They go to 13 goals four as Jezalenko kicks his third. Richmond, the seven goals five. Ten minutes into the second quarter. Ron Barassi, I'm, I'm beginning to wonder whether I, I'm having a, a dream. Well, it's certainly a dream that uh, for Carlton supporters coming true because they're playing superb football and everything that they've planned during the week in the way of technical moves and talking to players and getting them really going in hard as coming off as we see the centre bounce in there. Jones goes, he's been a dominant ruckman in this quarter but there was some shepherding there against uh, Francis Burke. I think by Ian Robertson, the man on his mark as Burke takes the free kick now, will drive his thrill. That's an in indicative of how Richmond are going. Even Burke is not playing well. Paul Sproul couldn't take the mark as we see Ben Wade on the half back pack goes for one of his long hand passes. Out to the man of the moment, as I said before, Barry Armstrong. His left foot goes up toward Walls. A beautiful hand pass from Walls across to Peter Jones. Carlton advance once again, and it could be a mark here. This time by Boyanich, he read the play wrong on that case and used his pace and dashed out to intercept that drive. There's his kick now out of the halfback flank as Paul Hurst flies high, couldn't take it. Very, but uh, Francis Burke does. He's the one hope that Richmond have at the moment. He's really playing well as he sets his kick into motion. Well down towards the centre-half forward position where David McKay flies. Couldn't take it. 
It's knocked across by Morris across the Kevin Sheedy goes for the wide one. Offside. And there's the first point for some time. And that's, uh, as I said before, in indicative of how things are going for the Richmond side. Nothing they try, not that they've had an opportunity to try very much over the past few moments, is coming off. And Southie with the kick now. Out, oh, a beautiful oh. kick, a good 70 yards up to McKellar. McKellar has the ball, puts away by Jones. Goes to Sheedy. Sheedy being clever has forced a handball under pressure. Out to Kevin Bartlett. He's got a lot of kicks, Kevin Bartlett. He's kicked this one, goes up towards the pocket. Where we see McKay punching the ball away from Barn. Barry Richardson scruffs the kick along. He's got the, the ball now, has it hand passed away, taken by Cumming, but his kick goes offline also, under pressure, and out of bounds on the full, taken once again by Jeff Southby. Southby from the back pocket on the outer side of the ground, about to take his kick. It's another good kick. Oh, he's kicking magnificently. I don't know about whether he should be using a drop kick or a punt kick, but the punt kick he's using is travelling one mile. There's Bartlett now of Richmond. Richmond struggling to get back into the game. It's a high one. It's floating over the boundary line. That'll be Carlton's kick, or maybe a free kick on Daniel Baum. A free to Baum. Baum of Richmond now. His kick goes right across the face of goals. They go for it. It's forced through for one behind to the Tigers. We are almost 13 minutes into the second quarter. And the scoreboard reads, Carlton 13-4 to Richmond 7-7. We're not even halfway through the game, and there's a, uh, a game score actually on the board at this stage. Southby now kicks almost to the wing position on the outer side of the ground. A chance for Sproul, but he's tackled there by Armstrong. Armstrong comes out with the ball, a long hand pass. Here's Jackson. Jackson gets around Francis Burke. Jackson now on the wing position on the outer side of the ground. His kick goes to Dixon. There's Walls looking for it. It goes towards him now. Just a go! It came from nowhere. Wayne Walsh, you can see the puzzled look on his face. Jesselenko's kick three. He would be 60 yards out, directly in front. It's on the way. It'll get the distance. No, it'll drop short. There they go. Richmond defenders, but it's Walls. Walls gets it out towards Jackson, but the ball goes over the boundary line. In the forward pocket for Carlton on the member stand side. The throw in. There's Big Nick. McKellar goes up behind him, but Nick... Uh, oh, around the net. Gallagher. Oh, Richmond really rattled. Players wondering what they can do to lift themselves. And Gallagher is no more than 20 yards out. You can say directly in front, you can see the angle. It's on the way, and it's right through. And at the 14 and a half minute mark in the second quarter, Bobby, I'd say, conservatively, that Carlton have a grip on this game. Yes, Mike, but let's, let's face it, whatever Carlton can do, uh, you know, Richmond's attitude after half-time could possibly be the same. They've still got 15 minutes of this quarter to, to re recover in, and the way Carlton are playing at the moment, this is the quarter where Richmond are really in trouble because they've got to come back, and the way Carlton are playing, well, anything can happen. As a guy and it's Jones who beats McKellar, the knock, it's taken by Jackson. Jackson's kicks a wobbly old one, Walsh comes through and takes a timely mark in defence for the Tigers. Wayne Walsh... Roger Dean having plenty of work to do as runner for the Richmond side. It's a nice kick by Walsh, goes straight down the ground. The pack fly, nobody can take the markers. Wake comes out, he bursts away from defence, drives the ball down to the half-forward flank, but it's Bond of Richmond who takes the mark, plays on quickly, drives the ball right over the half-forward line. Barry Richardson's there, and a good, courageous mark is taken by Barry Richardson, who was under a lot of pressure then, but stood his ground firmly and uh, showed uh, just how much courage that particular player has. Richardson, Very gutsy. 50 yards out, directly in front. A very a kick that really matters. It's there. And like the player he is, Richardson's caught through to bring up his second goal. A great goal for the Richmond side. A badly needed goal, and that would be the understatement of the year, I'd say. As Carlton, 14 goals for lead Richmond, 8 goals, 7. Richardson, cool in the crisis on that occasion. It was a, a lovely kick and one that uh, I think will give the Richmond side much heart. Back in the centre, it's umpire Bill Della. McCalla back with a long run. 
Peter Jones coming across McKellar. Nullifies a lot of McKellar's work again as Robertson comes out with the ball. Hand passes across to Armstrong. Armstrong kicks the ball wide where we find uh, Robert Walls. Robert Walls now has Barry Richardson on him after kicking that goal. Richardson's been moved down as Boyanich bursts away, knocks the ball on in front of him, throws it out again. Oh. Fumbles it now as it's recovered by Hall. Hall's hand pass is taken by Kevin Sheedy. Sheedy breaks away from the halfback line, looking for McMillan. McMillan's up high, has the ball knocked away by Hurst. It comes back again. He's under pressure, gets a hand pass to Robertson. Robertson, a hand pass across to Armstrong. Armstrong getting many kicks. This time, looks across. Almost a great mark by Sproul. He recovered quickly, puts it out wide on the half-forward flank. It's Duell and Hart. Duell leads Hart in the race for the ball. Knocks the ball away. Should get a free kick. Umpire Dallow we'll agrees on this occasion. The Richmond crowd not very happy, but it was easily a free kick to Bruce Duell as he plays on into the centre of the ground and finds Chandler. Chandler plays on, almost caught by Francis Burke, but got around Burke. Drives the ball down the half-forward. It's Richardson and Walls. It's knocked away. Highwood's taken down to the ground. It'll be Steve Highwood, the half-back flanker for Richmond, who'll take the free kick. Highwood, originally coming to Melbourne to do his national service. Broken Hill boy. Steve Highwood. Highwood's kick, it's a drop punt. He's going straight in towards the centre of the ground, looking for Rex Hunt now on the half-forward line, and Hunt takes, takes a good mark. 15-yard penalty will be incurred on this occasion. As umpire Dallow indicates, uh, a very, very long 15-yard penalty, but it was probably worthy of uh, that penalty. As Hunt, a lovely kick by Hunt, it's right down towards the teeth of goal. A pack flying, it's knocked away, taken by Roy's Hart. He's playing on close to the boundary line. He can't get clear, he's under pressure by Duel. It's called play on as Wade breaks away, puts a high kick down towards the half-back line. It's Dixon there with Sproul. Sproul knocks the ball on towards Kevin Morris. Morris Burke walks around, walks that opponent, does it again, right. runs around, gets his kick, it's right down towards the goal square, and a great mark here, taken by Ricky McLean. McLean has kicked one, uh, lining up for one. Now, statistician uh, already assuming that McLean is going to put this one through. McLean right on the teeth of goal. The kick right through the centre. Ricky McLean's first, Carlton's ninth, no, Richmond's ninth, I should say, Tommy Hafey, Carlton 14-4, leading Richmond nine goals, seven. Four goals, three separating the two sides. 19 minutes into the second quarter and 10 goals have been kicked in this. Gee, Bob, it, it's, a, it's an amazing game. We thought 13 was a lot in the first quarter, Mike. We're not uh, not quite 20 minutes. There's no reason why there can't be another 13 in this uh, quarter. And what a remarkable game. I'm sure that nobody, nobody at all, would have assumed a score like this uh, at halftime of this particular game. As Jones this time dominating the ruck work, knocks it away to Sproul. Sproul playing on, should be holding the man. Jackson's after the ball, under pressure at the moment, but there's no matter for this one, as the free kick has been paid to Paul Sproul. Sproul commenced in the centre, but uh, Tommy Hafey had to make some moves. He's moved Sproul to the wing, Sheedy to the centre. Sproul's kick goes in towards half forward. Almost a good mark for Chandler. It comes through to Duel. He gets his foot to the ball. It goes straight to Adrian Gallagher. He goes straight up the centre of the ground. It's Richardson in front of Walls. Walls knocks the ball on. Goes on again. A great effort by Walls. Cool play on. It's Burke who gets the ball out, but it goes straight to Gallagher. He spills the mark. Hunt knocks the ball on for Richmond. There's a pack of players forming as McMillan comes down the ground. He's on there with Chandler. There's a pack of going, but McMillan comes out with the ball. Can't get it clear. And umpire Della has nothing else he can do but bounce the ball. It's at the centre-half forward position for Richmond, with Richmond going to the Jollymont end of the ground. Jones again gets a knock. It's taken by Dixon. He tries to burst through the pack. Gets a hand pass in. Burke of Richmond gets a foot quickly to the ball. Sheedy's there. Throws the ball out in front. Should be holding the man. Agreed by umpire Della. Sheedy plays on quickly. He kicks off the side of the boot. towards the pocket. And it's David Mackay of Carlton who takes the mark. David Mackay. Permanent back pocket so far today. Mackay's kick. It's a high one. A 15-yard penalty being paid against Ricky McLean for running over the mark. Well, Bobby, they tell me that yesterday in Melbourne they were asking and getting $30 for standing room at the MCG. And I'll tell you, if you paid $30 or $50, you're getting your money's worth. 
And of course, those people sitting at home watching it uh, throughout Australia on the Channel 7 network must be saying, well, we've got all the comforts of home and watching a great grand final. The 72 grand final as the mark is taken by Dixon on the wing position on the outer side of the ground. Dixon now up to the half forward flank. Carlton kicking up to the scoreboard end. Walls knocks the ball away. Sheedy doesn't mess around. He kicks it and runs into one. He and Keogh have been uh, having a go at each other right through the game. It's up towards centre half forward. Kevin Hall. A beauty. Kevin Hall, a veteran. A great grand, a grand finals player. Remember him two years ago against Collingwood. Fantastic game. Hall now right up into the forward zone. It's gone through. Boy, and Itch and Nichols went up, but neither touched it. And it's a goal to Kevin Hall. Did you see Nichols then, Mike? It was a wonderful... He didn't actually ship, but he just made right. sure that he knocked Boy and Itch's hands away so that he couldn't touch the ball. Are you suggesting the Big Nick knows a few tricks? I think and he might, yes. After about 18 years, I... He's certainly showing him today. It's almost, you could call it almost a, a Nichols goal. 22 and a half minutes into the second quarter. 15-4. Carlton, Richmond, 9-7. Taken by Hurst. Hurst of Carlton now up forward. Jesselenko's backing back there with Clay, and Jesselenko's gone out. He's kicked three. And Jesselenko is... 30 yards out, directly in front. The Worm. It's on its way, but I think he's missed this one. No, he hasn't. No, it's swung back. Well, you can see Boynich looking at the goal umpire, saying he thought it was a point. It seemed to be going to the left-hand side, but he must have allowed for his slice, and it came back and right through for another major. That's his fourth, and Carlton go to 16-4. 100 They've got the ton up to Richmond, 9-7-61, and we are 23 and a half minutes, 23 and a half minutes into the second quarter, and there's some guy in the crowd trying to hang onto the ball. Why they don't stay home and play with their dolls is beyond me, those idiots. There's Tommy Hafey chewing the fingernails as well he might. What can he do, Ron Barassi? Well, he's tried a few moves, Mike. I think he's done all he can for the time being. And perhaps he best just uh, send a message round to play tight and hold on till half time and then have a, a real uh, a session. There's Jones, who's been a tremendous ruckman in this particular quarter. McCullough's gone right at the goal, the game. Hunt gets the kick up towards Hart. But in front there was Bruce Toole, who's uh, virtually beaten Hunt pointless in this half. Hart, I mean, pointless in this half. There's Duell's kick up towards the opposition centre half forward, and it's Hunt. Back down at centre-half back there at the moment. I don't think he's been put, put to the centre-half back position. But he's certainly down there at, at the moment, possibly having a run in the ruck. A 15-yard penalty being applied against Robert Walls here. I'm not quite sure why, but Hunt's not asking. He's going to take the kick now. And a long kick. A, oh, 70, 75 yards at least. A great pack of players flies. Nobody's going to get this. It's going to go, go towards the bounding line. Baum punches the ball back into play. Good play by Neil Baum, but Neil Chandler... Handballing across to Ian Robertson, forced to go to the left foot, but now has the chance to bounce and recover onto the right. Controls out wide. They're using the space beautifully, cart at the moment. Walls is having a picnic with the space that he's being allowed to play in. He passes back to Ian Robertson, who walks around, goes for the kick again out wide. They're using MCG spaces very well. They're showing Richmond how to use the spaces, whereas normally it's Richmond dictating the tune in this respect. Adrian Gallagher now with the ball, well out in the pocket, a good 60 yards from goal, goes well towards the, the pocket. On this occasion, uh, John Nichols couldn't take the mark, a bit harder to, would have, to have gained that. It would have been a great mark to have done it, but he wasn't quite there at the right moment and threw for one point, making 101 to 61, a 40-point advantage to the Carlton side. 25 and a half minutes into the second quarter, and Carlton are 40 points in front of Richmond. And Ron Barassi, this takes me back two years when Collingwood had Carlton in a pretty similar position as Hurst puts the ball forward. Nichols there was held on to. Through comes Jesselenko, loses the run of the ball, but he's into it. Big Nick dives there. And what's going to happen? Highwood's free kick. Do you remember that? How can you ever forget it? Two years ago to this very day, and you were something like 43 points down at half-time, Ron. That's right, uh, Mike. Well, this time it's going to be Carlton going in with a, a lead similar to that. Here we see Sproul breaking out the ball, goes for the drop kick, an underground subterranean one. There's Bruce Doole again, looks like beating Hart. 
You've got tremendous balance, this player. Hand passes away. A poor one on that occasion. Goes towards weight. Sproul knocked around the head. Hand passes across to Cumming, but Cumming couldn't take advantage of it. And coming through there was dual, but a free kick has been called and given to uh, Paul Sproul, who's given quite a lot of value this half. One of the few uh, Richmond players to at least break even and, and give some value to his side. His kick goes up towards the pocket. The ball comes to ground. Again, Dill gets it. Quickly ball handles. Handles the ball onto his foot, but it's intercepted there coming. by coming, and he will have a shot at goal from well out in the pocket. It's going high to the square. Ricky McLean will need to fly high here, but a mark almost taken there by Richmond. Bartlett with the ball now has a chance, but fumbling. St steps over. In come Paul Hurst, knocks the ball to Vin White. Hand pass across to. Oh, grabbed by the leg there. The scuffy old kick by Keogh was taken by Burke. Burke to Walsh. Walsh forced the Keogh under pressure. Beautifully intercepted by Southby, taking the wrist on the first bounce. Up towards centre half forward for this occasion. Barry Richardson, originally placed and starting at half forward flank, now centre half back, takes the kick. Richardson puts his boot into it. Over centre half forward for the Tigers. The big men fly. No mark, however. Now look at this. Mackay kicks it off the ground. But here's coming. Coming over to Morris. Morris breaks clear. He straightens up. He kicks. One behind. Ronnie getting back to that memorable clash two years ago when you were coaching Carlton. Although you were some 40-odd points down at half-time, you came out and won the Premiership. Uh, well, that's correct, Mike. And be interesting to see just... Uh what moves Tommy will make. He's made all, a lot already, but an attitude change is needed by the Richmond side, I feel. Southby's kick goes to the halfback flank on the outer side. The ball taken there by Morris. Morris down towards the goal square. Southby flies up high. McLean goes over. Through they come. It's Southby sticking to his guns. Bartlett tackling him. Bartlett comes out on top. He's tackled by O'Connell. He gets around Bartlett. Bartlett steadies. He kicks down forward. A chance here for Barm. He couldn't get to it, though, and through for another behind to the Tigers. Now, you can see Neil Baum shake his head as if to say, oh, hell, what can we do? Carlton 16-5 to Richmond 9-9. And we are 28 and a half minutes into the second quarter. Bob Skilton. 13 goals kicked in the first quarter, 12 goals so far in, in this quarter. And what a game this has been as South Big goes to the outer side of the ground. Free kick has been paid, and it's big Percy Jones. Jones, given the mantle of first rough today, has been a wonderful player for the Carlton side as his kick... Looking for Robert Walls, another great player so far. Has the ball punched away by Richardson. It's taken by McKellar. McKellar goes through and straight down the centre of the ground. It's McLean. Pass the ball, punched away. It comes towards McMillan. McMillan bursts through. Can't quite get possession Ooh. of the ball. Comes back again. Knocks the ball out in front of him. Sprouls coming through around the ground. Steadies up. Goes for the open goals. A great goal by Paul Sproul. Sproul's first. And Ron Barassi mentioned earlier, Sproul has been one of Richmond's few consistent players. He's now playing on the wing with Kevin Sheedy going in the centre, but it, was, it wasn't a move that, was, that Sproul had to be shifted out of the centre. Board reading, Richmond 10 goals 9, trailing Carlton 16 goals 5. And we're not even at half-time. 26 goals have been kicked. We're 29 and a half minutes into the second quarter. It's again, it's McKellar and Jones. It's taken by Robertson of Carlton. His left foot goes long and wide. All on his own is Robert Walls. He spills the mark. It's knocked away. It's Jezzelinko, though. Jezza goes in towards the big ones. It's true. It's a goal of Carlton. And it's 14 goals scored in this quarter as Jezzelinko kicks his fifth goal. Carlton, 17 goals, five. A remarkable piece of kicking. 22 shots for 17 goals. Richmond, 10 goals, nine. Jezzelinko's five. John Nichols, although he's been quiet in this quarter, has been like a real general down there. Uh, indicating just what he wants from his whole side. Up by Adela. Jones and McKellar. Jones this time gets it to Gallagher. Gallagher with the right foot goes straight up the centre of the ground. It's Walls and Richardson. Neither player can mark. Chandler bursts through the pack. Knocks the ball out to Jackson. Jackson comes down, does a blind turn, comes around, puts it down to the square, but it's Boyan. It's well out in front of Nichols. Boyan his plays on quickly, bursting away. Dives the ball to Sproul. And fortunately for the Richmond side, Sproul takes a mark. He plays on quickly, goes straight through the centre of the ground with a lovely drop kick. Down to centre half forward. Hunt was up high. It's the, bounce, the bounce beat McMillan. It came back to Hurst. Hurst goes wide, looking for Dixon. It's going straight across the ground. Dixon leading Sproul in the race for the ball. Forks back, there's three Richmond players, but a long hand pass finds Kevin Hall. All on his own, he has plenty of time to steady up. 
Drive the ball right down, looking for Nichols. Nichols is down there, he's up high. And Nichols has taken the mark. He's kicked three. Mm, he's kicked what? three. He's only 15 yards out from goal on a fairly acute angle, but nowhere near as acute as one of the goals that he kicked early in the first quarter. There's been 14 goals already kicked in this quarter. Nichols has the opportunity of making it 15. As he does, kicks truly. The goal umpire did not move. Both hands went up, and that's Carlton's 18th goal. John Nichols fourth. Carlton 18 goals five. Richmond 10 goals nine. Well, Carlton have never beaten Richmond in a grand, in a finals match in 52 years. But by the living Harry, they're well on their way here today, aren't they? I'll say they are, Mike. They're playing superb football. They're using. Uh, the space of this uh, tremendously big ground, extremely well. Obviously, they've, as I said many times during the telecast already, they've planned this game beautifully. Here's a knockdown taken by uh, by Richmond, taken once again by Barry Armstrong. He goes wide. This is what Carlton doing, using the spaces. Keo with a, a classy display there. Whips away. One bounce, two bounces. Goes for goal now, and it looks like sailing oh. through. No, it's just stripped it away. Well, that's breaking the ice for Carlton. They've kicked 18 goals, five and two this stage. And now they have a lead over um, Richmond of 45 points. Unbelievable. And we are 32 and a half minutes. Gee, they're long quarters in the 72 grand final. Waiting for Dick Clay to kick out. Two's on, Richmond were yesterday with the betting boys. Two's on. <laughs> Up goes Kevin Hall in the centre there. Couldn't quite take it. Taken by Morris. Morris down towards centre, half forward. Rex Hunter's there. Knocked away there by uh, Finn Waite. He loses possession of it, but he's getting a free. And Royce Hart says, oh, no. Waite's hurt. I hope it's not his ankle gone. He's calling for the trainer. As Duell kicks to the wing position on the outer side of the ground. And the mark is taken there by Gallagher. Gallagher of Carlton swings around. Oh, he's in real trouble, Finn Waite. The kick now to the half forward flank for the Blues. There's Robert Walls. He'll be paid it. There's a siren, and Waits in real trouble. Siren for half-time with the scoreboard at the MCG reading. Carlton 18-6, 114, Richmond 10-9-69. But it looks as if Walls is going to take his kick. He's going to take his kick. He's kicked three. Our Walls would be a good 65 yards out. It's on its way. Let's see. It's going to drop short. So repeating for you the half-time scoreboard, Carlton 18-6, 114, Richmond 10-9.